lifestyle's been freezing cold Like the diamonds in they chain, no lab grown stones Jimmy Boy and Ben Baller sit on the throne They never sold shit clone, get your ass on That bullshit is for the rodeo, it don't belong Blowing on that donut beat pack from the biggest bone From Cape Town to Ace Town, they hold it down Internationally respected, you see the crowns Dust brothers and theme kings, we all hustlers Been rolling like Jimmy Boy was feeding customers Cold as ice at the block, coming cop from us Well as podcasts in the world that can't fuck with us Lifestyle we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's, cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we're setting the price This lifestyle we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice Yo, yo, what's up, everyone? What's good? What's really good? Yes. What's cracking? Finally, video. We really on video now, yo. High definition stereo sound, high definition video. You can see my ugly mug. You can see that fat motherfucker, Jimmy Boy's face. By the way, guys, you are watching the brand new Cold as Ice podcast Co-hosted by me, Ben Baller. Co-hosted by my man, Jimmy the Gent, formerly known as Jimmy Boy. Uh, by the way, Jimmy, why don't you tell the people where you are right now? Man, y'all know what it is, man. I'm out here in Vietnam right now, Da Nang, Vietnam, to be exact, where they like to call it the South Beach of Vietnam. So, look, if y'all catch me, you know, glancing off behind the camera on the side, it's because I keep looking at this ocean view and just really enjoying the peace and the waves and everything. You know what I mean? But we here. We here, man. He lying, dog. He looking at a bunch of pork and a bunch of steaks and cupcakes and all kinds of Vietnamese bread and shit. No, I'm playing. By the way, guys, I am in Hollywood, California. Yo, very excited about this. Let's break this down real quick just so you know. Cold as Ice. It is a new format. It is a new show. It was not going to be like Behind the Baller. We're going to be going over topics, pop culture, all types of things. But the point of this show is to amplify Asian culture now if you know jimmy is vietnamese i'm korean obviously but yes sir this is really about uplifting asian americans i would say 85 percent or more of the people on the show will be asian american and we have guests coming on that you guys wanted whether it be bobby hundreds or it might be jimmy's cousin that did 20 years in the penitentiary we're gonna have a lot of people influential people uh entrepreneurs actors Whatever Asian athletes that we can find that are out there that you know, but people life, people who come on life. here are gonna be real people, okay? And um, mm -hmm. you know, again, this is a Dust Brothers production. Just so you know, they do video. Uh, shout out to all the podcasts yes, that they do. You already know how we did with part three, made it look professional. This is not just professional podcasting. This is professional video now. All right, y'all. But yeah, man, um, we gonna really get it in, man. You know, and I'm really excited about the new show. You can finally see, again, his ugly mug, my ugly mug, his big belly. Actually, you can't see your belly, bro. What's up, man? He had, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He had his shirt off earlier. Okay, he had his shirt off earlier. And I don't think YouTube might take the video I mean, down. I've been trying to show it off. You know what I'm saying? I, I lost 30 pounds since October, so I'm trying to show it off. I'm going to let y'all know, man. We're we going to keep it coming. You, you know might have I mean? lost 30 uh, doll hairs. I don't know if you lost 30 pounds. But um, anyways, <laughs> look, check it out. Shout out to our guy, Illegal Cartel, for the theme song. Appreciate you, bro. New theme song is Fire. Yep. Fire, and, um, fire. We'll keep this pushing. So uh, we want to jump right into this real quick. You know, you guys have been asked these questions for a while now. And without any, you know, like we had a delay, okay? There was artwork. There was other things. It, it takes a lot to set it up. We're not just using iPhones. We're not doing what everyone else is doing. We're doing this professionally. And we really hope that you guys understand that we really care about what we're doing here. Jimmy, let's uh, let's go into some of these questions, yeah? Yeah, let's get to the questions, man. Let's get on what they, they, they've been asking for. Okay. Oh, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention, this is as cold as ice. So this is a jewelry show, all right? We're for focusing on luxury things, shiny things, diamonds, gold. So when you have any, you know, any advice that you need when it comes to buying something, whether it be an engagement ring, whether it be a chain or something like that. And by the way, we will have jewelers on here. My bad. So the fifteen percent of the people on here will be jewelers. We're gonna do a top ten. We go do a top twenty. We go do the favorite pieces. 
people that we fuck with, watches that we fuck with, all that other stuff. So let's get into the first question. Sure. David writes, what's up, guys? I wanted to ask your guys' opinion. How much should an engagement ring for a regular person cost? And also, Ben, I wanted to ask, bro, with all due respect, when you were married, did your wife ever trip about you smoking weed? What about your mom? I know Koreans are, for the most part, strict. So I just wanted to know if she tripped as well or not. Thanks a lot. Much love from the A. God bless. David P. Jimmy, if you'd like to answer this question, because I don't know. I, I've, I've talked about engagement rings a bunch, but what do you think a guy should, a regular person should spend an engagement ring? Uh, so I, I recently, not recently, I think about maybe like three years ago, four years ago is when I heard that saying. They said uh, an engagement ring should be, what was it, three months of your, your pay that you make? I've right? heard two months like mostly. That, right? like two a, months pay. I never, um, I, for me personally, I never knew there was a, a like a budget or limit or maximum. I felt it was just, you know, buying something that, you know, your lady might want or like, you know what I mean? Um, when I got engaged, you know, I, I bought an eight carat diamond, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I just felt like it, that's what I wanted to get her, you know what I mean? Um, but, but I'm not bringing it up to say that that's what you should get. I'm, I'm saying like it should be, you shouldn't put a price on love, in my opinion, you know what I mean? So... You know, as long as it's something that's nice and something she's happy with, you know, I feel like it should be, it shouldn't be a price, man. I, you know what I mean? But I guess if, if there's a standard, that, that sounds about right, two or three months pay. Okay, so. That, that's all the, I can really say on that. The standard should be two months It's it is what I've always heard. Um, let me add to some things. And this is important for you guys out there. You shouldn't break yourself. But being married is not cheap. Um, weddings aren't cheap. You got to put all that into in, in perspective. So realistically, if you got five G's, that's what you got. That's what you got. You know, at five carats, at least you can get a one, 5,000, you can get at least a one carat. Okay. You know, yeah. if you want to go all out all this, I, I highly suggest that you insure your ring. If you don't own a home, get renter's insurance. There are a lot of good insurance companies out there that are insuring things. Uh, California is a tough state to get insurance with, but it's not very expensive. Now, let me remind you, if you buy an engagement ring, make sure you get a GI certificate. If you have to, sir, you know, you have to just, you know, um, settle for it, EGL, make sure it's EGL USA. Do not go with EGL Israel. They have their own type of scale and that's not what you want to do but i suggest gia now number one number two i want you guys to understand something once your ring is insured there are many ways to get your not only your money back the replacement value it will go up it will increase no matter what anyone tells you i am living proof it is 100 percent a fact that people bought an engagement ring for me they have through years actually end up it ended up being a better investment don't go to a pawn shop. Don't go to other places. Definitely. That could be a different conversation. The last thing, number three, understand this, guys. When you propose to a girl, this is very important, that is a promise to get married. So legally, if for whatever reason you guys do not get married, she is legally obligated in many, in most of the states, the United States of America, to give you back the ring. Now, you may be like, ah, fuck this. I don't want the ring back. But I'm just saying she is obligated to give you the ring back. Now, if y'all get married, that's her ring. Now, depending on how long y'all been married, that's community property. So I just want you guys to understand all that. You know what I'm saying? That's just some some basic tips to engage your ring buying. Um, let me answer your other part. Did my wife ever trip at the time about smoking weed? No, she never cared. She would smoke weed with me. Uh, my mom... You know what's really funny is for the longest time my mom didn't know I smoked weed. I think the first time my mom finally found out I smoked weed was really late in life. I would say probably around 2010, 11. And at that point, it was medicinal, whatever else. And uh, when my pops had passed away, my mom didn't eat. My mom is real strict, OG Korean. So she couldn't eat. She was sick. And my brother-in-law happens to be a Jewish guy, he actually uh, rolled up a joint, had my mom smoke it, stimulate her appetite, and she started eating. So my mom ain't tripping no more. My mom's been really cool about shit. I think tattoos was definitely a bigger thing. But all right, man. Thank you, David P., for that. Let's get to the next question. Yep. Shout out, David. Yep. Uh, next question is for Am Andrew Mabo. Yo, boys, it's Mabo here. Curious. I have $500 to $700 a month I can invest in the jewelry. What should I be buying? Thanks in advance. Jimmy, 
You want to answer this? I mean, I have an answer for it, but go ahead, why, don't you, why don't you tell them what you think? I'm going to let you answer that one. <laughs> I'm going to let you answer that one. All right, so $500, $700, man. I would get as many small Swiss gold pant bars that I could get. I'm going to be honest with you, to be real. $500 in a gold chain, I don't think you understand how thin it would be. If you look at this necklace right here, just this thin necklace, this thin necklace alone, by itself, this is 18 karat. You can see this necklace, right? This thin necklace at 18 inches is going to cost more than $700. So if you can get some of the really small Swiss coins, that'd probably be your best bet. Is there anything else? you? I mean, do, do you agree? Do you disagree? I agree. I agree. I definitely agree. There it is, That's man. the best bet. All right, Andrew. That was the easy question, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Andrew. Okay, so Rohid Ibrahimi writes, what does GIA certified mean? Um, Huge fan. I came across Ben Ballers back in the mid-2000s on a forum where he was discussing his favorite white tea brand. Always appreciate the free game. In addition, my question is, how important is it to have a GIA certificate? Diamond, please elaborate. So GIA certificate, right? It's the Gemology Institute of America. They are like, if you collect baseball cards... They are the true certificate of authenticity. They are the birth certificate to your diamond. Diamond don't really yeah. have a DNA, but it's like this is the closest thing to it. It's your bloodline. Now, GI certificate breaks down everything, not just the fucking clarity, color, cut. It'll break down the facets, you know, the table, everything, the real full-blown. It's, it's beyond a birth certificate. The reason why it's so important, mm -hmm. it is there's different scales. If you go to a gemology lab, whatever city you're in, even if that person is a GIA certified jeweler and a gemologist, they would probably grade the ring at what someone would consider a 70 to 77% scale. EGL would probably be somewhere between an 80 to 85. GIA, GIA is going to be somewhere between the 90 to 98% of accuracy when it comes to what your diamond is worth and the authenticity and the actual real specs of what it is. So when you get a baseball card, you go to PSA. Beckett is also very good. If you go to the other brands, they might not be, they're not going to really get you the most amount of money. So GIA is just the most trusted gemology lab. They're based in Carlsbad, California. They have um, a headquarters in New York now, but that is why GIA is so important because if you want to insure your ring or if you want to resell it, that certificate of authenticity and the origin is, is, is important. Definitely. With that being said, I also want to add to people that if you have a diamond, you can also send it to GIA to get checked. You can. Too. Like Ben said, they are the birth certificate to your diamond. So if you might have had like a diamond given to you from a family member that passed down, you want to get it checked. Um, I would suggest you just send it to GIA and they can break it down to you and send you back and be making GIA certified. You know what I mean? And also, I think they also say that you should get it checked, even though it's a GIA certified stone after a good amount of years, you should always get it uh, checked again, you know, because you never know from the wear and tear and things like that. So that's um, great advice. Yeah, definitely. Yes, sir. Alvin Zhao writes, hey, Jimmy and Ben, I got a couple questions for both of you about insurance for engagement rings. Can you talk about do's and don'ts for engagement rings insurance? I want to know what is worth adding coverage to and not worth adding coverage to. Also, is it rec recommended to add insurance in addition to my homeowner's insurance or get a separate policy for it? Jimmy, you... you so let me answer this one yeah. first. Um, my opinion through that. Um, so, you know, what's good? Uh, I would always say my preference of insurance because you can always get... Um, like jury insurance from companies that sell jury insurance. But a lot of those times I feel like um, if there is a claim or something happens, they kind of try to lowball you and things like that. Um, all my insurance, I usually go through my homeowner's insurance as a personal article. I've had, you know, no issues when it came to issues of having claims or anything. And they give you what the appraisal value for or what the value for it, replacement value is. Let me give you some more free game. If you have a high value home, or you have a regular home, say your home's worth $500,000, there's something called an umbrella policy. You could get an umbrella policy that covers everything. Now you could get an umbrella policy for a million dollars because you have three, $400,000 in art and $200,000 in jewelry, or you have a car that you want to even insure that's going to go deeper than anything else, like a collector's item. Sometimes the umbrella policy for certain cars are cheaper through your home. Now with the umbrella policy, again, it has to be something personal. It cannot be a business-related item. You could have you know, been, have been robbed and they steal your computer and they ask a trick question. Listen to me very carefully. It is very important. If you get your laptop stolen, they say, 
Do you use your, 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 your laptop for business at all? Do you ever do work on it? As soon as you say yes, guess what? Your claim's going to be denied. It was very important that what Jimmy mm -hmm. said is a personal article. Make sure you do that. Now, if you want to, there is extra insurance coverage. Now, the thing is this. I don't know. We might be dancing on a, on a, on a, on a legal <laughs> thin line, but let's say you and your girl are out and your ring gets stolen while you're on a trip to Europe, to Rome. You're in Japan, wherever that may be. No, it didn't. It got stolen in your house. Okay? And you're covered. So that's where that is. Anything else to add, bro? No, that's about it. You know what I mean? But yeah, like I said, my personal through experience, personal article through your home insurance policy. For people that don't own homes, you could get renters, but the uh, they don't cover that much. It depends. I forgot the amount they cover. It depends on, I guess, the policy you choose. But if you have a home, uh, or your wife has a home, you get in the policy, it could insure up to a million, two million dollars. You know what I mean? And it's about, I think it's uh, last time I checked, it's like $7,000 for every 100,000 you insure. And that's for the whole year annually you know what i mean it's it's full coverage just like a car how a car would and by be. the way think about it if it's seven thousand dollars right it might sound like a lot if you break that over 12 months you'd be surprised at what you could it just it, it's a safe thing to do you shouldn't be buying jewelry exactly and like ben said about how jewelry you know you do appraisal each year it goes up um so you could have bought something let's say for thirty thousand five years ago and you pay or let's say a hundred thousand you bought uh and you insure for a hundred every year seven thousand and five years yeah you spent 35 grand but um after those years the item that you bought might be worth double or triple what you paid so really it's kind of like an investment if something was to happen to your jury you'll be reimbursed it, you'll get back even the amount you put out for the insurance Indeed. Um, real quick, can you see my earrings? I'm wearing two earrings. You see these earrings? Okay, guys. Big so, ass motherfucking rocks. Real, real talk. So check this out. These are VS1, VVS2 in my ears, okay? One is an eye color. One is an H color. I purchased these earrings in 2009 for right about $78,000 for the pair. Both these earrings are upwards are about $200,000 now. So now imagine, my policy really hasn't changed. Now, I've gained money like it was a stock, and I'm up. So just think about that. You know, 2009, that's 15 years. It's, I just, I've had these for a long time. They wound up in value. I don't want to hear shit about anybody else saying some weird opinions. These are facts. They're not arguable. Next question, Josh Kim writes, Yo, Ben, I'm in between getting a micro Jesus piece or the Millie Jesus piece. Do you think the Millie is too big to rock every day? Is the white gold uh, rhodium plated? Why are most of these rappers days wearing white gold? And which color do you think looks cleaner? All right, well, there's a question for you, Jimmy, but I'll ask it after. Yeah. I don't know how old you are or not how big you are. Me personally, I wouldn't wear a Millie every day, but you could wear a Millie every day. Not a problem. A micro Jesus is perfect. You wear it every day. It's not going to affect you. You might not even know it's on your neck anymore and not. Is white gold rhodium plated? It isn't. It is mixed in differently early on. Why are most rappers wearing white gold these days? What color do you think is cleaner? Can I be completely truthful with you guys? If I don't be really truthful? I think it's silver and it's white gold rhodium plated. Am I crazy, Jimmy, or is that what it is? No, that's what I was thinking too. But a lot of people, yeah, you know, well, I, I have a lot of white gold stuff. It, it's preference, but a lot of people are wearing white gold because if you have um, silver dipped in yellow gold or rhodium in yellow, it's going to fade or it's going to turn you green, yeah. your neck or wherever you're wearing or your wrist. Yeah. There is, so there a lot is. of people just stick to the silver. They might not even rhodium in it white. They might just be straight silver. I mean, there's some and stuff now. It. There's some stuff now. Um, Jackson, I forgot. There's like, if they say, and their key is to say, it's 14 cold, 14 karat gold. There's like this weird gold fill where they can illegally have like 5% of like a, it's not even gold. It's like, it's, it's a cap. So you see something, oh my God, it's only 700 bucks. It's not real gold. It's not like real legit solid gold. It's just, and you put it up and it weighs a piece of a paper. I wore my white gold mostly for most of my life. I'm back wearing yellow gold and there's been two small errors. Yellow gold, I feel like is the OG color of gold. You don't need to say yellow gold. So what are you wearing? You're wearing gold, mm -hmm. right? That's the color of gold. Now, yeah. personally, I like rose gold. Um, 
I stopped wearing rose for a little bit. Right now, I'm on a yellow gold rocking thing, right? So I'm rocking yellow. Really, it's just a preference thing. I think white could go with more. Yellow is more OG, and I just feel like there's fake yellow gold out there too as well. But you'll know when it, when it looks a certain Definitely. way. Especially when it's really orangey, and you know it's not 24 karat. It's just 10 that's been dipped. That's corny. Now, Jimmy, he asks you, uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy boy, when are you going to update your website so I can buy some chains off you on an online format we actually working on a um a website right now it's been you know difficult to really get a uh, man I, I ain't gonna lie just difficult to get the right team on that website stuff but we uh we got a new site finally you know under construction to where we'll be able to uh like suit all the needs that everybody needs to go on there and just buy directly and not even have to go through me or the or the um the Instagram or anything. Guys, just so you know, IF and Co's website is probably one of the best jewelry websites I've ever seen. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. It For took real. three <laughs> three years, three years to get the store to look where it looks now. Shout out to my cousin James. It took three fucking years yeah, to get the site to look James, the way it looks. Man. All right, next question. Yeah. Ty Dorsey writes, what's up, OGs, Jimmy Boy, Ben Baller. Thank you for this opportunity. I've been working in jewelry for a few years now and I feel like I'm ready to start my own brand. My question is, what are some of the most important things that I need to have in line before I launch? Jimmy Boy, this is a question for you. <sighs> so talking about launching the brand, um, everything you might need at the end of the day, you know, I feel like the, the first thing you need before you launch the brand is to kind of like have a code policy as in policy of what it is you're trying to do with your brand and represent you know what i mean um knowing your market you know a lot of people jump out and they're like i'm just trying to attend to everybody that needs anything kind of understanding your market you know makes you able to narrow down your market of people and really focus on them instead of trying to um feed everybody but yeah man like i it, it's, you know, pushing your brand. It's just knowing your brand and understanding it and trying to really, I'm trying to, my mind just went blank because I'm trying to really think about when I, when I came out, you know what I mean? It was more of like my love for jury, trying to just do what I liked. Like I remember the first time I even hashtag done right. Um, I think I was I was at a jewelry store and I seen something that looked really good. Done right hashtag was started by just going around seeing jewelry because I, I I consider myself like a jewelry enthusiast. So you know before I even got into jewelry, I, I bought jewelry from Ben. I bought jewelry from different jewelers. I went around just seeing the work. You know what I mean? Understanding it and what I thought was done right. You know the quality, craftsmanship, execution, and everything. Um, so when I pushed done right, it was the main goal of making sure whatever that came out, the quality, the execution, the craftsmanship and everything was right. Really just pushing people to 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 seeing what I felt, you know, a piece of jewelry that was done the right way was done overall. Proportion size to the chain, the piece, uh, the weight, all those kind of things, you know what I mean? So just really understanding, you know, the what you're trying to do. That's the most important thing, man. Going out and doing it, full fledged. Okay. I got to add, really important that you create an identity. Is your brand representing you as yourself? Ben Baller and IF and Co are two different brands. Ben Baller did the chain is a subsidiary of IF and Co. So are you representing a brand or are you representing yourself? You got to, you got to, you got to really, you got to commit. You need to figure that out. One, and you got to run with it. Number two, you need to have some sort of unique style. What sets you apart from anybody else on 47th Street, downtown LA, any jewelry district in, in, in the world? It could be the gold souk in Dubai. It doesn't matter. Number three, understand this and you're going to do well. Religious pieces are universally the best selling items there are, whether it be a Jesus piece, a cross, a high, a star of David, Muslim, you name it, Buddhist pieces. Religious pieces always do the best, period, point blank. Do you have custom jewelry? Do you have somebody that you can outsource your stuff to? That is really important too. And lastly, the most important thing, your jewelry business is your inventory. If you do not have gold and, and inventory in stock yourself, don't start a business. It's cool to have memo and stuff and everything else if you're gonna have a boutique, but it's a lot easier if you have your own inventory. Now, if you do have to have a memo, that's cool. You can even sell stuff online and be like, yo, I got these Cuban chains. I got these. Have a re you know reliable source. I could send you stuff. Maybe they could drop ship for you. That helps too. 
pretty much answer the whole question, don't you think, Jimmy? Definitely. All right. Yeah, I feel that. Yep. Uh, next question. Dylan Taib writes, this is Dylan Taib uh, from Miami, Paris, France born. Thank you so much for telling me you're from Paris. No, I'm fucking with you, man. I'm just saying. Some of you guys are so funny, so specific. Ben, congrats on all the new moves. Back nine, Ben is here. Back better than ever. Jimmy, welcome to the show, man. Those sound effects you do are fire. Hit him with one, man. Appreciate it. Hit him with <laughs> Y'all know what it is, man. <laughs> Something about when you look at that piece of jewelry, man. Just yeah. like when I said that hashtag done right. <laughs> and you just staring at it and you just like, it's like in your head, you're thinking of it already like, God damn, that motherfucker looking right. Crap. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what it is. Just, oh, oh my God. Vicious, I just got to cramp my vicious, leg vicious, here and say, uh, 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 uh. anyways, <laughs> Ben, you're going back in the jewelry game. Uh, what are you doing different this time and for the goal as far as, far as goals, uh, model, team size, et cetera? Um, thank you guys for taking so much the question and going back into golfing. Would uh, love to tee up with you, tee up with you in Miami. I don't really have any goals. I have no new motto. I have no new team size. I don't think you guys understand that. I think IF and Co is a lot bigger than you think it is. Um, I don't think that people think it's smaller than what it is. I think it's a lot bigger than what people think it is. Uh, a lot more employees that are with IF and Co. I want to say the only goal is to remind people that I'm still number one. <laughs> And I've already started out the year crazy. You know, championship rings, professional, you know, golf league, a Super Bowl ring for the M&Ms, you know, um, making a piece for Bad Bunny J Balvin through, for Tiny. Uh, you know, I got some crazy things going on with Peso Pluma and other stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's what it is, man. Appreciate you, uh, Dylan. Yes, sir. Okay, so Sonny uh, Bathila writes, what's up, Ben? Day one BTB listener. I'm excited to see what you and Jimmy have in store at New Format. Hope the new year brings you both success. I have launched a new watch company that serves a niche market. It's called Viani Watch Company, and we bring light to the history of Hindu numerals. All our timepieces have Hindu numerals, only watch to do it on the market. I have recently launched online and currently building traction and getting sales. Similar to how you and Jimmy have talked about in the last BTB episode of the year, you're putting on for Asians. And my goal with this company was to put on for Indians in a non-diverse watch market. My question for you and Jimmy would be, is there any advice you would give me to a young entrepreneur entering the watch jewelry world? Would appreciate any free game of support. Feel free to check out my page at Viani underscore watches. Best Sunny. What do you think, bro? Uh, man, you know, once again, like we were talking about the branding thing. Um, so the, uh, you know, what the, what he's doing is, is something different. So, you know, we, I, I definitely want to check out the, uh, the site, you know, shout out to Sonny from what you're saying, you're, you're going the right direction, man. And just keep pushing. You, you, you can't limit yourself. Go for it. Just go for it. Okay. I got a different, uh, I have some, uh, uh, some, some contrast to that. You're entering a very saturated market. You're entering a very competitive market. Some questions I need to know what you can answer yourself is your watch already, you have one question right there. What sells your watch apart from the rest? Hindu numerals. Fucking dope. You know, you see Rolexes, they have the Arabic dial sometimes with the numbers and everything. Okay. One important thing. Is your watch movement Swiss? Do you plan on having a tourbillon movement or are you using like a Hong Kong quartz movement? That's a very important thing. Some people say, oh, a Casio tells time. It sure does. But they have a very specific way of telling time. Casios are waterproof. They serve a purpose for what they do. You know, at one point, Casio G-Shocks were like 40, 50 to 60 bucks. Now G-Shocks are 100, 125, up to 250 bucks. Or Mr. G could be a thousand bucks. You have to know your market. The price point is very important. But remember, even Rolexes, when you're in Los Angeles, okay, cool. When you go to Houston, you might lose a couple seconds. You might have gained a couple seconds. The oil is different. You got to let it calibrate a little bit. Miami's a little more humid too. When you go to India, when you go to Japan, all these places have different things. You have to understand that. And that's what the best watch companies in the world. Some of these watch companies aren't actually great timepieces as far as horology goes. Rolex has not always been known for having a great timepiece. Omega has, Panerai has, Breitling has, obviously AP, Patek, and Turbion, and the higher you know, technical movements. But understand that what Jimmy said is go for it. I agree. If you got it, you got financing. You know, I wish you the best. I wish you luck, man. Definitely. All right, we only got a few more left, man. Nicasio Torres writes, what up, Ben? What up, Jimmy? Ugh. 
This is Nick, subscriber. Congrats on the new podcast. My question is, what is a good entry Rolex? Perpetual Datejust or Submariner? If so, when buying a Rolex retail at a Rolex retailer, what are some things to look out for? I'm friends with a buddy in NY that helps me getting a plug. Jimmy, you could talk about this. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's thinking, right? Perpetual, you know, per, uh, perpetual date just uh, or Submariner. What do you think is a good entry level Rolex? I'd say a good entry level Rolex is a, a good Submariner. I definitely feel like that's a good one. Or if he decides to go with date just, I feel like they're, you know, both are good entry level. For me, it was different. So, you know, it's like you, you got to shine more light into it for them, Ben. Okay. So check this out, man. <laughs> My first entry level Rolex was a Prezi, so. Okay, so my first Rolex in 1997 was a gift from Dr. Dre. And it was a date just. Jubilee band, stainless steel. I think it was probably $2,500. Now, the crazy part was that was a lot of money. And then he threw a diamond bezel on there aftermarket. And this is before I was doing jewelry. Now, I will say this. Times are different. Back then, you can get a Submariner date for around... Three thousand dollars, brand new. Times have changed. You see the, 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 you know, the value. That's crazy. Also, Nick, you got to think about, you know, what is it that you want? A Submariner is, is, is a, you know, is is a lot bigger. Now, when you talk about entry level perpetual date chest, are you talking about a forty one, or are you talking about a thirty seven? You know, you're gonna get a lot of better, a much better of a deal on a thirty seven. And to be honest, it's really weird, but like. John Mayer is rocking 36, 37, and you know, it's 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 more OG, right? The 41 millimeter is kind of big. So it's 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 a big thing, you know, it's a big, big, big um um range. Now you could find older, you know, a 1987, a 1990, you know, day just with uh, you know, that still has the good test, and we'll do that another time. We have a watch in front of you. And uh you could find one for, you know, five, six G's. Maybe even less. I don't know, Jimmy. You'd know better about that. But a Submariner, anything from like 2002 now on, it's going to cost you eight nine k regardless. You know, the, the 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 demand is a lot higher. Mm -hmm. So for resale value, the sub might hit more heads, but at the same time, it might be easier to attain a date just. Now, also another things too are there's now date justs with the Oyster Band. Now, me personally. I don't mind Oyster Band, but the Jubilee is more classic and more accepted when it comes to a date just. It's definite. It's obviously not a president band. I don't know. You know, if you're thinking about, so you're saying you're talking about going to a Rolex retailer, so I'm assuming you're trying to buy something new. Look, if you get a watch at retail and you get the plug, me personally, I think the Submariner is going to hit better. It's going to get more money and it's sporty and you can kind of wear it everywhere. You can even wear it if you feel like you want to be dressy. You agree? I agree. I'm not okay. going to lie. There it is. Uh, like, you, you're seeing the Submariners. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's what it is. All right, we got two questions left. B-Mart from SAC. What's good, man, to the coldest duo in the pod space? Question for the Forrest Gump of Hip Hop. In the song Mandated by Mozzie, he says, Ben Baller got a N-word filthy chain water. I'm finna pull up on that fool and place the same order. What chains did you make for them? Also, a few years back on Twitter, I remember you saying Mozzie has spent a couple houses with you. Do you have any stories about Mozzie or Filthy? Congrats on the pod. Feles Año Nuevo. Mozzie has made a lot of chains. Mozzie has made all the Mozzie chains. Um, what's his company? Do you, do you know what his, his record label is called? Uh -huh. Made his record label chains, made a bunch of rings. And I'm not talking about like six, seven chains. A dude by like 15 chains from me so you know uh crazy stories about mozzie mozzie's always a real chill dude not nothing not, they just kind of like you know hey what's good how you doing you want to come you know get some dinner whatever boom come in buy stuff pay no headaches no nothing love mozzie filthy filthy is a crazy motherfucker bro jimmy you ever dealt with filthy before Filthy Rich nah, out, out, out of the Bay Area. He's crazy, man. Yeah, so Filthy. But yeah, Filthy's a whole different animal. Filthy's invited me to Oakland. Have like 50 <laughs> bitches around. He's crazy as hell. Filthy's bought championship. Filthy has spent a million dollars with Ivan Co. Filthy is absolutely a beast. He ain't scared of shit. Filthy actually did a show in Vegas and the Migos jumped on with them. So he's respected. Good dude, all that. Not much more else to say. All right, man. Last question is a diehard BTB Army dude. Taro, California, my man. Question one, I'm just getting into sneakers. Any sneakers that y'all love or suggest I check out? 
I think he's really brand new in the sneaker space. Jimmy, is there anything you, you think he should look out for? <sighs> right now, man, no. I, I don't know, man. I, you, I feel like you more, um, you more OG when it comes to that, bro. You're going to have to lace him. You know what, man? I think right now the Jordan 3 is probably the hottest shoe in the streets. Kobe's are still very hot. I think SB Dunks have kind of died down. I think the New Balance uh, collaboration shoes that they're doing have have skyrocketed. Sneakers are down right now overall the general market. So, you know, I think those are good starts right there for you. All right, Tony. I feel like fours. I feel fours are doing their fours thing. are fours are good. I think I'm just uh, saying threes are real hot right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, question number two, Ben and Jimmy. What is your favorite moment that you guys have had with each other? A funny story you haven't talked about on the air. You go first. I'll let you go first. No, I mean, it, it's one question. So I'm just thinking, I mean, is there, what can you, I, I can't, I'm trying to think. I mean, we've talked about a lot of things that have happened on the air. I don't think we talked about the one time on your birthday when we went, remember, uh, and Rob was with us. He started getting paranoid and he fucking just disappeared, remember? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We was at the club just getting turned uh, and he was just like, yo, I, 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 I was like, you know what I mean? And we're like, yo, don't worry. It's good, though. We chilling. Don't worry. Next thing you know, he just burnt off, bro. Like, I was like, what the fuck? That's yeah, that hilarious. was Playhouse. And it, and me and Jimmy started bopping bottles. And Jimmy started, I think Jimmy started off with like six uh, Nectar and Peel Rosés at Playhouse. And I remember Igor came over, the manager. He came over. And Playhouse, by the way. Shout out to Igor. Playhouse man. was possibly one of the greatest clubs in Hollywood, period. And Rob Kardashian real, came with us. This real. is a crazy part. You ready for this story, guys? Rob Kardashian got in the car with me and Jimmy. So Rob is sitting. Were you shotgun or was he shotgun? I was shotgun. Okay, so <laughs> Rob Kardashian is in the back of my 760. This is a V12 BMW. He's sitting in the back seat, which the is crazy. Trooper. So we pull up yeah. and we get there. Jimmy starts popping bottles. And within 20 minutes, we might have had like 30 bitches at the table. We had 30 girls at the table. Kim Lee was there from fucking uh, Bling Empire. It's so funny. Kim has been around for fucking ever. Jesus Christ. It's hilarious. And I think girls were starting to get touchy-feely. I don't know, man. I feel like Rob didn't really have that swag back then, right? Not to diss Ross, my man, but why do you think he just <laughs> shook off and left? Bro, he was really paranoid. I don't know what it was. He just felt so paranoid. Like, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he sipped some of the lean we had. Because you remember, we, you pulled out the little eight-ounce bottles that we was getting, and we was pulling it up and yeah. getting Sprites and everything, bro. We yeah. poured it into the Sprite. Remember the... the oh, uh, should we put it into the ice chest? The, 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 yeah, we poured it into the even the... Uh, when they bring the Sprites out, those big things. Uh, what do they call it? The chaser things. Yeah. We poured the fucking drink... It's straight into the Sprite, yeah. bro. Like, I think he might have sipped too much or, or something, I, bro, because I, he just got annoyed, like, out of nowhere. Well, the like, thing we is, spent the whole day. this is the crazy part. I don't even think Uber was around back then. In fact, I'm positive it wasn't. So I don't know no, how the fuck wasn't. he got home. Yeah. Rob Kardashian, how the fuck did you get home? Because you came with us and you left. Literally. And we never saw him again. So I got a story I just remember right now. I might have mentioned it, but it's it's just, it's different because... I didn't give full context to the story. I just got out of a really dramatic situation. The shit put me in jail in Orlando. Fucking Jimmy had to bail me out, whatever, boom. And now the crazy whole situation about this is this girl had an abortion, went crazy on me, but I'm feeling a certain type of way because I'm like, the abortion hadn't happened yet and she was doing drugs and I did drugs. She was sniffing cocaine while pregnant and I was kind of worried and I was going through a really tough time. So me, Jimmy Boy, and a couple other people were talking about it. And I didn't want to hear anybody. And Jimmy actually gave me some really actual sound, not necessarily romantic advice, but like real emotional support advice. He gave me some good words. He had some good sayings and some good things. Like, this is not your practice life. Make it a great deal. It was like positive things like that, putting in my brain. We pull up to El Torino, one of the most legendary taco spots just on the border of Koreatown. And I'm sitting here sad, emotional, a little hungry, not really tripping. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, five gunshots happened. Do you remember that, Jimmy? Outside King, it was a taco spot. <laughs> five gunshots happened. And I remember I was like, oh shit. I was like, oh, what the fuck happened here? I didn't jump like crazy, a lot of people did. Jimmy is still telling me emotional advice while gunshots are happening. 
And we found out later that the dudes who did the gum shots, they were trying to cut in line. And I was like, man, get the fuck back, man. And I guess Francis was trying to talk to him, whatever. Boom. I didn't know it was them. Dude had like six teardrops tattoos on his eyes. And he had like a hoodie on. He was definitely in the wrong place. I don't know what the fuck happened, but dude did a yeah. drive-by. And Jimmy is still trying to give me emotional advice. I'm trying to fucking think like, hey, dog, did one of us get shot? So that was funny. That was funny. Um, Hell yeah. Uh, last question. So many stories, bro, literally. Which hangover... Small forgot about the hangover. We were just talking about Kim Lee. Which hangover movie would you have liked to be in since Jimmy wasn't on when I asked this originally? So I guess there are three hangovers, right? One, two, and three. Which hangover movie yeah. would you would like to be in the most? Jimmy, why don't you answer first? I think it would be the one in Thailand, part two. Okay. You fucking with the lady boys? No. I'm fucking bro. with you. Bro. I'm fucking with you. Just think, hey, because I'm thinking about that little monkey, bro. How he was just hitting licks, bro, like it's nothing, bro. That's oh, just, yeah. just, you know what well, I'm saying? Well, I don't know if you know, but. And then old boy was in the freezer. Yeah. Well, the crazy part is most people don't know that, you know, Jordan Winter was in all three of them. Because he's Zach, uh, what the fuck's his name? Zach mm. Garofalopoulos, whatever his name is. That motherfucker look just like Jim, uh, like Jordan. Yeah. So I would be in number one. I think I said that because Mike Tyson, it was original one. Actually, you know what? The funny thing is, part two, my, my girl Jamie Chung was in the movie. Nah, I can't. That's my man's wife. That's my, that's my dog. Yeah. Part one. Part one would have definitely been it. So guys, look, man. We just answered a lot of questions. We went real thorough on that. So yeah, man, I appreciate you guys asking the questions. Uh, we got a couple things we'll talk about. Freestyle off the top of the head. Let's get into it, man. Well, first of all, I need to know. Okay, Jimmy, this is funny. We're going to ask about this every week. If not, I'm going to remind you every week. What are two Asian stereotypes? It could be any race, and I want you to break it down. Two Asian stereotypes that you could think of off the top of your head. Um, the first one I'm going to think of is not wearing shoes in the house. All right, I, 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 let's go Let's go back to back. So, so I'll go with something, okay? Koreans have big ass heads. Jimmy's the only motherfucker I know got a bigger head than me, right? I'm a seven and five eight. This is a big ass. I got a big ass. If you type in why are Koreans and don't st just stop in Google, it will say head so big. All right, Jimmy, what you got for me? <laughs> and all Asian people eat dogs. <laughs> I mean, I guess all Asian people eat dogs, right? I don't know. I think that's more of a Korean and Chinese thing. No, nah, they say Vietnamese too. Vietnamese, Korean, and Chinese. They got a, you know, they got an old alley out here in in Vietnam. They said, what? They got an alley. Yeah, in they Vietnam? have an old what? alley where it's like this, they sell dog meat. God damn, for real? The whole alley is just. You want to try it? Just fuck the, around for no reason. No, I'm alright. I'm alright. Okay. You you all come right. down here. We, yeah, you come down here. I'll go with you. But I, just, all I don't right. know about that. Uh, last Asian stereotype because we're doing two each every week. Korean men have bad tempers. It's a true thing. True thing. All right, actually, I was going to ask you something real quick, man, Jimmy. It's really weird. Do Vietnamese have beef with... Is there is there a race that Vietnamese people have the most beef with? You know what I'm saying? Like, Korean people are known to treat Filipino people kind of bad and it's fucked up. And, you know, they talk down on them. I seen a TikTok just the other day about that shit. And Koreans have beef with Japanese people. More OG Koreans have beef. But who do Vietnamese people have, like, Hey, like like beef with anybody? So gr so growing up, pretty much all I I know or how like growing up hearing it's like it's Filipino too, bro. Like I don't know what it is. I do know that I've heard like Cambodian people really hate Vietnamese people. I don't know if it's like the same hate in return or what. You know, growing up, yeah, like older Vietnamese people, like you know they 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 don't like Filipino people. We we actually you know at one time in high school like. There was like a big like beef like between Vietnamese and Filipinos. Like we used to like on site green light, you know what <laughs> I mean, to see each other. It's all, you know what I mean? I just can't picture Viet uh, uh, Filipino people as violent people. I know there's Filipino gangs and shit, you know what I'm saying? Shout to uh, Bahanala gang. Uh -huh. but I just don't I just don't see oh, you know, yeah. Filipinos, you know, starting beef. I got, just... I got, I, yeah, but I ain't gonna lie, they they some bro, we we one time we we got in this big fight where like we 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 stopping in the middle of the streets and cars stopping and getting hit, man. They 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 got some tough motherfuckers, man. Shout out to all my Filipino homies, you know what I'm saying? You know, Pinoy boys and all that stuff growing up. Like we we was going at it, man. My oldest son's actually half Filipino, bro, you know, so yeah, oh, they some they some wild ones. Okay. They got some wild ones. Okay. 
Like my my first case, you know what I mean? The attempted murder was um is basically because uh it was because of that beef, you know what I mean? So the dudes that got shot at and stuff were the Filipino dudes. And they had testified saying that it was me. That's how I caught that original charge. And it got dropped down to deadly conduct with discharge of a firearm. God damn, bro. That was from that whole beef that we were having. I got to ask you something, and it fucked me up. This is a really important question. It just came from a, from a psychiatrist, and it's an old saying. But before I do that, man, didn't you say you had something to ask me? You said you had something you wanted to ask me. You said you had something you wanted to ask me on the first episode that you wanted to ask me for fucking 15 years. I remember when you first messaged me on MySpace, right? And you were go, yo. And this is when I was doing music, remember? And you were like, yo, you really, like, you really got what it takes to, to make it and blow up, bro, as long as I don't pick up the mic again. So I always wanted to ask you, right? Do you have any records? Uh, I think you got some hidden records. Somebody got to have some records of you rapping back there, bro. And I, I want to hear these motherfuckers. I think we all want to hear it, bro. There was a night. Late 1996, I was in a studio with King T, Dr. Dre, Butter, Krista Glove Taylor, Stu B. Doo, which was uh, Stu Fingers, um, the whole Dr. Dre production team, Aftermath. And we had a freestyle session, and I was doing really bad. And so we took like an hour break. We were in the studio for like 10, 12, 13 hours at a time. We'd just be studio locked in there, right? Record one at uh, Aftermath Studios. Mm -hmm. And so... There's this guy named Drama, Drama Seidel. He wrote a lot of Dr. Dre's rhymes. So he wrote me a sick-ass rap. And I came in and busted that bitch over a Dre beat that's never been released. I don't know who the fuck out of me. My boy um, Pesci, he's the engineer. I have no idea what that shit is. But there's definitely a, there's definitely, I ain't talking about 16 bars. I'm talking about a song, bro. I wrote, I, I rapped a whole song. And I wonder where the hell that shit is to this day. Oh, no, so whoever got it, if you're watching this, man, <laughs> we need it. <laughs> All right, bro. So this no, question definitely. fucked me up. Okay? This question fucked me up. This was from some, a psychiatrist. It's a standard, too. And I'm going to ask you a question, okay? Okay. Jimmy, now imagine you're married. All your kids. Let's just say your wife with a... Jackson and Jimmy Jr. Okay, mm -hmm. you're married. You obviously this is this is this is your wife. You guys are on mm -hmm. a boat in Vietnam somewhere. The boat's sinking. You got your two sons on one side of the boat, and you have your wife on the other side of the boat. You could only mm -hmm. save one side. You could either save your two sons, or you could save your wife. Who are you saving? Like if if you if you're just asking that straight up, there's no like small print or excuses to whatever. Of course, I got to save my children. Okay, what do you think I would answer? No, if it's like, what do you mean? I, I would think it's, you would say your children. It's not a trick question, bro. You would save your children, right? Yeah. Okay. What do you think I would answer? You would save your children. Okay. I would 100% save my children. Do you know what the psychiatrist said? And this is an old what? saying. This is like this is the standard. You're supposed to save uh -huh. your wife. And did he tell you why? Yeah, I, 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 he did tell me why. I'm just asking, like, like, do you understand how crazy? Okay. You see the look on my face right now. That's so why I'm like, did he tell you why? Because <laughs> like, I want to know why. <laughs> Supposedly, we're supposed to save our wife. Okay. Once you and your wife got married, said I do, that's the most important person in your life. Y'all are partners forever. And it's you guys against the world. You're supposed to save your wife over your children. Because you and your wife can have more kids. Man. Is that the dumbest, fuck, you know, is that the stupidest thing you ever heard in your fucking life ever? It is because, you know, with that being said, I want to add, I have a, I have a cousin that I'm close with. And uh, her and, and her husband, you know, had a son, my nephew. And when he was three years old, bro, he went, they, they went to the dentist. And the dentist ended up overdosing him with um i think the the laughing gas or whatever when they put him to sleep to, to pull out some teeth and he passed away bro it ruined their family it ruined their family bro like she and they ended up having a daughter after they ended up having another son that looked just like my nephew but after that happened bro like their relationship never saying they ended up having a divorce and everything you know so I don't even believe that that don't make sense because it's like you can have more children, but then you just gave up or sacrificed your first children 
So, all right. What you gonna do? Sacrifice the children you have later too? Like what the fuck, bro? Like, Ready for this? Yeah. I asked Nicolette that question this morning. I asked Nicolette the question. Mm -hmm. You know what she said to me? What? I said, if it came down to me on one side of the boat and the kids on the other side of the boat, you could only save one side. First thing she said was, can I kill myself? I was like, who the fuck are you? You know goddamn well you ain't going to kill yourself. And she's like, okay, well, who, who, who would I save? I would save the kids, man. And I'm like, I expect you to. You know, and I told her the answer, and she's like, "They're fucking tripping." So I was just like, "That was something. No, that was something sure. that just." I, I really want to know. It just fucked me up. I would really want to know, like, what, what, like, how the psychologists are, psych how they were taught that, or like, what, what's the explanation no, of right now from just that? Stupid. Because like I just you said, said they it said was. because you can have more yeah, children, but it's fucking stupid, bro. Your kids are not asked yeah, to be crazy. here. Okay. All right. On to the next thing, man. We gonna talk about a few things and wrap the show up. Obviously, last week. You know that me and you are going to this Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney fight. Shout out to Devin Haney. That's our dog. I know Ryan. Yes, sir. And you know, we going straight ringside, front row, row A, row one. Please do not fucking talk to another fucking person when Devin's trying to get your fucking <laughs> attention. Jesus Christ, man. It's like Jimmy's too fucking nice. He's not to fucking talk to anybody. He's sitting there. He's like fucking, you know, he's like. Hey man, how you doing? The guy's asking him fucking stupid ass questions. It's like, and like, who cares? He doesn't know how to. He doesn't know how to be like Jimmy. What was I doing? Anytime someone tried to talk to me, bro, you you walk straight through their ass like they did, bro. You walk through their soul. Like I was just like, yo, you know that's tight. But you know we had to do pull up in a wheelchair. Was talking to me, so I'm you know I'm I'm you know I'm just listening to what he's talking about, talking here and there, and I'm thinking that one of the security should be asking everybody to sit down or where their seats at and things like that because I see them asking everybody else, but, you know, they just... Brooklyn is different, they, though, dog. They just let it keep Chase going. Center, Chase Center's a little bit more liberal. They're going to be chill. Barclays, they, they, they sit motherfuckers down. All right, so anyways, you saw what happened, right? Ryan Garcia said he got kidnapped and had to watch kids get raped. You, you saw that, right? Yep. Okay. Do you think that Ryan Garcia really got kidnapped? No, I don't think so. All right. Why do you think he would say some stupid ass shit like that? Man, I I can't answer that, bro. Why is he saying all the stuff that he's saying? I you know, and and I I don't know. I'm not gonna say would it be for attention. I don't think so because I I feel he has all the attention on him right now. You know, so. Yeah. It's it's I don't know maybe he's trying to you know like like you know how murderers try to do the uh what what's that reverse uh, psychology what like saying that they're not competent they're not competent to stand trial because they're crazy oh man maybe he's trying to make people think that he's crazy yeah. so you know so Devin puts his guards down whatever I, I don't or know or even bro. just like, think it's crazy. Like, like even try to be a handicap right so basically like all right well I'm not good enough to fight or if he loses he has a reason I just think bro something's wrong with dude he's so talented he's a handsome dude you know. He go out there. He's a great fighter. And I just don't. It just shit just don't no, make no sense. It's just corny to me, bro. And it's just like you know, like it's just really fucking stupid and sad. And I think it could be a good fight. I think they, you know, they give each other a good fight. I just don't get it. It's really lame. And the worst part about it is, so many people are saying, "You see all the exposing going on in Hollywood right now. Motherfuckers are talking about all kinds of shit, Illuminati, this and that. You know, they're raping people. People are gay. Shut the fuck up, man. Like it's just dog. Like look. You don't got to oversell the fight, man. It's going to sell out. The fight going to get the views. Exactly. All right. What you think about this Mike Tyson, uh, Jake Paul fight, bro? You, yeah. you, you, who, who you got? I want to say I have Mike. You got Mike, right? For the sake of boxing. Okay, for yeah. the sake of boxing. Well, let me tell you something real quick. Jake Paul is a really good fighter and everything, right? I just read. No, he is. I'm not taking that away no, from no, him. No, no, not at all. I just read the bylaws. Of the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. You guys probably haven't read them yet. Mm -hmm. So I know Mike reached out to his manager. Do you have any idea how much Mike Tyson weighs right now? How much? Just what would you guess? 245. He, he's probably like 250, right? Mind you, he could be even bigger. Mm -hmm. There's bylaws in there that absolutely make no sense. Number one. Mike Tyson has to get down to 170 pounds. There is no possible way on earth that Mike Tyson is going to lose 75 pounds by this fight, the time of this fight. Okay. Number two, you're not ready for this one. 
at any given moment, he is allowed to tag team his brother Logan and Logan could come in and fight for him. And then when he wants to come back, he can tag team and come back in. That's the stupidest shit you ever heard in your life. And that, that's, 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 it retarded. just doesn't make sense for Mike. Now, the thing is, there's all these other little things in there, just, just stupid ass things. I'm going to say this Mike Tyson's punching power today at 57, the crushing punching power. He fights inside. He does not fight. He's known for the, the, the uppercut and the fucking, the, just the crushing power. He's not going to chase Jake around. They have to fight inside. Yep. People think if he goes more than three minutes, he's not going to go. No, no. Mike is actually in good shape. He is old. But with these rules, it's just fucking stupid, man. It's just fucking dumb, bro. That's really, that. yeah, that's just really, I mean, a lot of it's weird as heck. So does, can Mike uh, tag somebody in? <laughs> he need to tag fucking, well, shit, no. I was going to say Nganu, but Nganu got his ass whooped. Got his ass knocked the fuck out by Anthony Joshua. <laughs> My last question, bro, was I was just curious, man, because, you know, people be asking me movie. I'd be asking for movie advice all the time. People ask me movie advice and stuff. Is there anything you're looking forward to watching this year? Movies? Any movies coming up you want to see? The first thing on the top of my head, um, I really want to see Deadpool. You know, I'm a big Wolverine fan, especially Hugh Jackman, you know, so I'm excited to see that. I just saw this thing on Facebook. I don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly a, a Gladiator is coming out and it's supposed to be Denzel Washington. I don't know I, how true that is. You I didn't I mean? hear I that. I just seen it when I was glimpsing it. Listen, Gladiator, both... Okay, first of all, there was a movie in 1988 or 89 called The Gladiator. It was called Gladiator. It was uh, with uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. and this white dude. It was one of my favorite movies. But Gladiator, Ridley Scott's movie Gladiator, is up there. It's actually top three highest rated IMDb movie. It's one of my favorite movies. But if Russell Crowe's not in it, mm -hmm. and he can't be because he died... Denzel, why? Like, I don't know, bro. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see it. But um, when the fuck did you become a fan of Hugh Jackman? No, I always liked Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Like, it's crazy. Like, okay, you know, what, is like, what does uh, Deadpool uh, have to do with Wolverine? Is, There's no correlation with Deadpool. So the new Deadpool 3 is, uh, it is actually. So the new Deadpool, is, it's basically Deadpool and Wolverine. But so basically, you know, the, the collaboration that they have together is basically Deadpool was basically created the same way Wolverine was. You remember? Um, yeah, yeah. Wolverine had the whole like, um, okay. Logan, and you remember uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds was in there, and he played the guy uh, that was the creation that they made later, and he had his mouth sealed, and he fought him. That's supposed to be Deadpool. Okay. No, no, man, man that's, that's, what, that's what you like. Look. I ain't gonna lie to you, but I, I've always been a Hugh Jackman fan, especially watching him uh, when he did the movie Prisoners. I never saw Prisoners. There was a minute where I just like, I what would this that. guy do? You have to watch it. It's yeah. amazing, bro. Okay. Amazing. One of my top 10 movies. One of my favorite movies that have come out in the last 10 years is The Accountant with Ben Affleck. And now, yeah. part two is coming out. Good. Ben Affleck, J.K. Simmons, oh, the whole fucking gang. So I cannot wait to watch that motherfucker. Man. I'm also looking forward to Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't like this going to Netflix. I don't know, man. I just feel like they hope they don't dumb it. I yeah, hope they don't, exactly. I hope they don't dumb it down. By the way, I got a quick question for you, bro. Do you have any idea how old Mark Zuckerberg is? Don't Google it. Don't Google it, motherfucker. I'm looking at your um, fat-ass face. I think he's like the same age as me around there. Why, why would you know that? Because I think I looked it up one time. <laughs> ah, damn, bro. I had no fucking idea that he's 39 years old, bro. I am like literally shocked, bro. Like he's not just one of the richest men in the world. How did you think he was? Bro, I thought he was like 44, 45 because, you know, like it just, and that's even not really old. Just to be as powerful as he is, it's just crazy. That fucked me up. Mm -hmm. But anyways, guys, listen, man. That is it for the first episode of Cold as Ice. Look, we're going to be talking random shit. Again, amplifying Asian Americans, Asians, period. We're going to be talking about that real, slick, Definitely. luxury jewelry talk. We're going to be talking about Asian stereotypes. We're going to be talking about pop culture. We're going to be talking about what Jimmy ate. Whatever Jimmy ate in a week could take fucking We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. An hour and a half. <laughs> All right, a man. lot of stuff y'all been waiting for me to talk about. Y'all got to stay tuned because uh, we're going to talk about it. I'm just a little jet lag right now, but uh, we're going to get jiggy. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, man, I really appreciate you guys. Big shout out to the Dust Brothers. We are uh, yes, signing sir. off. And again, guys, 
This was just a little warm-up episode. We coming in banging. When Jimmy gets back in America, we got guests. We got some fucking fire people. Mm -hmm. We got some shit to talk about. We're going to really start pushing this show. I just wanna, ready. We just wanted to you know, put something out there. Throw a little feeler. You know what I'm saying? We're kind of sizing people up. You know what I mean? So listen, man. I'm Ben Baller. And I'm Jimmy the Jizant. And you guys are watching. Former known as Jimmy Boy. You know. <laughs> and thank you for watching Coda's Eyes Podcast, man. I appreciate y'all. Episode one, man. Appreciate y'all. Now we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice. We took a chance to fall, now we're setting